everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays with the occasional bonus live video. This is going to be probably the last video I post before we hit that 50,000 subscriber mark. So if you are not subscribed, be sure to subscribe because we are going to do an awesome giveaway, which I'll talk a little bit more about at the end of the video. But when we hit 50,000, we're going to give away some really cool stuff. So make sure you're here for that and you will have to be a subscriber to win. Now today we are going to do these awesome lighted blocks. I've done two different styles. One style is only lighted or only glittered on the front and the back is clear. And then this one is all over. I did all the glitter on all the sides. So we did just one style is what I'm going to show you, but I'll explain to you how to do this style as well. They're both super easy, really fun, and you can be really, really creative with these which I think is really nice. These make really cool night lights. They make awesome little accents in your house. So let's get started. We're gonna add glitter to this glass block, which is super easy. If you've done the Christmas ornaments, it's the same general idea. Now this one's kind of old. Um, this is old vinyl, but I love it. I love the design. So we're gonna leave that, but you can decorate these any way you want. You don't have to do, you know, a certain holiday. These make really great night lights. So the first thing we're gonna do is flip it up so it's standing straight up. And then your glass block should have a hole in it. A lot of people use them as banks and things, but your glass block should have a hole in it. I typically do the hole at the top. You could do the hole at the bottom if you wanted, but I usually do the hole at the top. So all I have is some polycrylic, and I put mine in a squeeze bottle, but you can get this at pretty much any hardware store. I do recommend the polycrylic versus most of the other adhesives. Just like with the Christmas ornaments, you are going to want to use a good quality product and I find polycrylic to be the best. So all I've done is squirted a bunch in the bottom and the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that I coat the bottom. So I'm just moving my glass block around and my glass block is, like I said, pretty old. Um, we used it for a uh, donation collection thingy. So then, you know, it, it's gotten old, it's used, it's been used well, it's loved. So there's definitely not enough polycrylic. This does take a ton. So I'm going to put a bunch on the side, and I'm just going to do my sides first. It doesn't matter which way you go. You do however you want to do. But I will typically try to do all of my sides. And this is not as easy as a Christmas ornament. It is a little bit harder to see through your um, block as you go. So then what I'll do is I'll usually flip it this way and let it sit for a moment or two. And you're gonna get some dripping and that's totally fine. It's okay that it drips, it's no big deal. But I just like to get a pool of the polycrylic on the other side and then I will swash it around again, just like you do when you do your ornaments. You just move your polycrylic around inside of whatever you are filling. You could do this with jars, you could do this with ornaments, pretty much anything that you want, plastic or glass for the most part. I haven't tried it really on anything else, but I can't imagine what else I would ever want to try it on. So we're gonna let that go like this way for a minute, just to let it pool again. And a big thing, like I said, this does take a ton of polycrylic, so you'll want to make sure that you do have quite a bit. I'm probably going to need to refill my squeezy bottle because I just used it to make some ornaments. So then you're going to do the same thing, and you're going to do each side of your block. So you want to make sure you fully coat it, and you're going to want to watch really closely and make sure you're co coating the entire thing. Again, this is just like doing a Christmas ornament. So don't like think just this is way harder because it's really not. The hardest part is when we go to drain it because it does have the lip on it. But even that is not too bad. So I'm going to let it sit like this for just a second. Kind of let it pool again. And that's the other thing. These are kind of heavy. So I find like I have to take a break in between my, my movements just so that I have a little bit of a break holding this because it is heavy, heavy, heavy. But... It is really fun. And this is, like I said, this is super easy. Like, this does not take rocket science. If you have bubbles, which I do have some, I'm going to just drain it and I'm going to let it pool again. And I'm going to see if I can make sure I get all those bubbles out because there are a couple. And you want to make sure that you're getting all the way to the edges, all the way. And so now I'm going to turn it and let it sit this direction. I'm going to let it pool again. And we may need to get some more polycrylic, but I'm going to let it go ahead and pool for just a moment or two. This just gives you a little bit more polycrylic to work with. Now you can absolutely just do the front of your block. You can do the back of your block, just the sides, whatever you want. But this one we're gonna do the whole block. Now I have one where I only did the 
front of it and I didn't like it as much. I think I liked it better when it was fully covered. So now I'm going to let it sit flat so that the back is the last part we have to do. And I'm going to let that polycrylic pool. And like I said, I don't know if I'm going to need more, but we might. So we're going to just add a little bit more in here. And we're going to, again, just do the same thing. This is all just basic repetitive coating. And what I like about these projects is you can be like super creative. You can do whatever you want with them. You can put whatever designs you want on them. You can do them for children. You can do them for yourself. You can do them for holidays. These make really nice gifts. I really like, I saw um, an idea where somebody put baby stats on it and gave it as like a nightlight for a nursery. I thought that was pretty cute. But as you can see, all I'm doing is just kind of moving it around. And if you find that you're having trouble getting the polycrylic to move too much, again, just flip it over one way, let it sit for a minute and pool again. And then you end up with a puddle and it's a little bit easier to move it once you have like a big puddle. And sometimes if you have a spot that just is refusing to coat, it's a little easier to get it to coat when you have a big puddle of it rather than just trying to move really small bits of it around. And again, this is just something that's going to take a little while, but it is really easy and really fun to do. And I do recommend using a fine glitter for this. You're going to get a better coverage with a fine glitter. And I might need to let this pool again because we're getting just a little bit. I'm going to let this sit upside down just a second. I don't want to let it sit upside down too long because I don't want all the polycrylic to drain out. But I just wanted it to pool a little bit. I've just got a couple little spots left. And as soon as I get those, we will be able to drain it. I'm sorry my dog's going to bark. There's... I don't know what she's barking at. She's crazy, but it's nice outside, so there's probably people outside doing outsidey things. Non-crafters, you know. Those people that see the outdoors. So I'm going to let it sit again because I've got another little spot that I'm hoping it'll cover as it drains down, and it did. So now that you're sure that you've covered it, now obviously you can just kind of double check, you're going to flip it so that your hole is on the top, and I've put some paper down to drain onto. And I like to actually help mine drain, so I'll hold it at like an angle. It's up a little bit right now. And then I'll just kind of keep moving it around to try to get it to drain out. You want to be careful. You don't want to get the polycrylic all over the outside. But if you do, you can just wipe it off. It's fine. But I do put some paper down just to protect my table. And the more you do these, the more you'll start to kind of figure out like what how much you need. Now right now I'm also trying to make sure I get the top coated. I'm not always super worried about the top, but since we're already here, we're going to go ahead and make sure we get it coated. So I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I just sometimes will use my finger if I'm having trouble getting it to coat, or if there's just way too much polycrylic and it won't come out. I'll use my finger and just sort of push it along and help drain it. Now again, you do kind of want to be careful to get it on the outside, but I do keep a rag handy, and that way we can easily just wipe it off if we're having trouble. So I would say keep some sort of a rag on hand when doing these. I just use either old t-shirts or old kitchen towels or old towels in general. Plus, if you get it on your table, you can wipe it up really easily because this will get kind of messy if you're not careful. So again, I'm just going to keep draining it. And the draining takes a while, so I'm going to go ahead and do this draining off camera, and then I will show you how to add glitter. So we've let the polycrylic drain out for just a couple of minutes and we are going to add our glitter. Now we are going to use the neon coral from Nicole brand. Now I did get this at AC Moore, so I can't promise that you'll be able to find this color anymore, but you could probably find a similar color if you like the one that I used. Um, this is a, an ultra fine glitter and it is a holographic, so it's really, really bright and sparkly and it's really a fun color so I'm gonna just pour some in now this does take quite a bit of glitter so keep that in mind if you are going to use a color just be sure that you have quite a bit and you don't run out um, the one that I had at the beginning of the video with the blue is actually blue and white because I didn't end up having enough of the blue glitter and I only did the front of that one so it does take quite a bit so just like when you do the ornaments you are gonna pour a bunch of glitter in and then you're just gonna move your glitter around in your your block. It's really simple. If you've done the ornaments, you can absolutely 100% do these glass blocks. It does, again, like I said, take a lot of glitter, but you're just going to make sure you move it around 
and just like you do when you do your ornaments I'll tap it a couple of times to get any loose glitter off you want to make sure that you're coating all the sides and the front and the back and then even around towards the top because you want to get a nice even coat but I do tap it a bunch to get any loose glitter off and that way we're not wasting glitter and it was really hard to kind of keep this in frame because I had to keep looking through the little hole at the top to make sure that I got everything coated but it was really easy and once you get it really well coated it's super simple but you just keep tapping it and tapping it and then it is good to go once you have the whole block coated there's the front of the block it looks really good um, we're gonna have to add more glitter because like I said it does take a lot of glitter but once you have the entire block coated you're gonna want to let this sit for at least 24 hours to give it full drying time if you try to put your lights in before you let it dry for that full 24 hours you may chip some of your glitter off and nobody wants to do that because then you will see little spots in your glitter so we're gonna go ahead and let this dry for about 24 hours and when we come back we'll be able to put our lights in dry overnight and I'm just using whatever lights I could find which these ones have little candy canes on them but it really doesn't matter you can see the little candy canes and you can pretty much use any kind of light that you want but the little fairy lights work really really well for this so all we're gonna do is stick them through the top which I've laid this guy flat so that you guys can see this better but we'll just loop them in the top and the one thing with the fairy lights most of them have a wiry um, cord on them so you can kind of bend them a little bit better and make sure you kind of evenly distribute them. I usually just kind of fold them over. And if you want, you can glue your battery pack to the back of your box if you want, but I don't tend to. I usually just kind of set it behind it. But let's turn these bad boys on. And I'll turn the lights off so you can see this a little bit better. And let me get these tucked in. And let me turn the lights off so you guys can see this. I've got all the filming lights on, so it's super bright in here. But this way you guys can take a look and see how pretty this glass block came out. The color is really gorgeous. I absolutely think this is really pretty and this color looks kind of very pinky and sparkly and it's really fun with a little kitty cat on it. But you guys can do any kind of design that you want. These make awesome night lights for kids. They make really nice accent pieces. I've seen them done with sports teams, Christmas, Halloween, names, monograms. Uh, they were used, I saw a friend use these for a wedding actually, they put their last name on it and then they had people write them little well wishes and then they stuck them in to the glass block and they had it lit and they were able to keep the lights towards the front and then the cards towards the back. It was really cute, super fun idea. This was a really fun project, really easy to do, fairly inexpensive. You guys can get these glass blocks at pretty much any craft store. They run sales on them all the time. I've also seen these at Menards. If you guys have one of those, it's like a big box home improvement type of store. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I am always happy to answer those for you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays with the occasional bonus live video. Um, this will probably be the last video before we hit 50,000. So be sure to subscribe because there is going to be an awesome giveaway for my subscribers when we hit 50,000. As you all know, it is going to be a Cricut Explore Air 2 machine with an Easy Press Mini. And then we have another little second prize to offer as well. And then be sure to join my Facebook group. We have a lot of fun over there. I really love getting to know you guys. You guys are my crafting friends and I truly enjoy our time spent together. I hope you guys have so much fun today. Have a great day and happy crafting.